Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope that you guys are doing really wonderful this morning. And we've got an active Cat 5 monster out there in the Atlantic, and it could be one of the strongest hurricanes ever in the basin. So we've got Hurricane Lee, which has rapidly intensified into an extremely dangerous Cat 5 hurricane. We'll be looking at the latest for it. Areas such as North America, going to Atlantic Canada, and Bermuda should keep watch as we head into next week and then there's also margo out there likely to become a hurricane but i'll be taking you guys through what is happening across the caribbean and the rainfall forecast there as well so before i go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update Alright, so let's go ahead and return to this satellite imagery. There we can see Lee, it's quite prominent, well to the east of the Leeward Islands. There we have Margo out there. And uh, let's zoom into the Caribbean and see what's happening. So we've got some thunderstorm activity across some areas, uh, some parts of Central and Northern South America. A couple showers moving in to parts of the Lesser Antilles as well. But then as we head up to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, we can see that there is some substantial shower and thunderstorm activity taking place within the area but for most other areas this morning there isn't much happening so this is the rainfall forecast as we head through today coming from the euro model and we can see that this map gets more colorful in the bahamas parts of central and northern south america particularly for colombia and venezuela so within these areas there could be some substantial rainfall activity as we head through today uh, we already saw some of that happening across the bahamas and the turks and caicos islands but then as we take a look at those totals outside the Caribbean, that is all in association with Lee. So those very high rainfall totals are going to be remaining offshore. So that is the good news here. What is going on with Lee? The worst of it will remain offshore. So across most islands of the Caribbean, nothing crazy expected today in terms of rainfall activity. Things get a lot drier down in the Windward Islands, including Trinidad, Tobago, and the ABC Islands. And then across Northern Islands, Leeward Islands, going to Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, there could be some showers popping up across some areas here and there and then across the Bahamas we could see a bit more rainfall activity within the area and sections of Florida as well. Now we want to go ahead and look at our active tropical cyclones and we are starting out with Margo. So here we are looking at the satellite imagery and we're not seeing a well-defined storm out there on the infrared satellite. So it has moved away from the Cabo Verde Islands not impacting the islands much. As you look at the latest conference forecast this morning we can see that it is likely to strengthen into a hurricane as we head into the early part of next week so it is sustaining intensity at 40 miles per hour and is moving to the west northwest at 16 miles per hour so it should remain out to sea not going to be bringing any impacts anywhere at least for the next several days so the main concern the main deal of this video is hurricane lee here we have the monster so this is a cat 5 monster it has rapidly intensified because this time yesterday it was a cat one hurricane and by last night when we got some data from the hurricane hunters that flew in that confirmed category five force wind so this rapidly intensified in only several hours jumping from cat one to cat five in less than a day so this is quite remarkable here and this would be reminiscent of irma if it were to continue a westward track and that is not expected so that is some really good news that's the fortunate thing the worst of the cyclone is not expected to affect anywhere but that doesn't mean there will be no impacts whatsoever as we look at the cone forecast here we have it so Lee strengthened a bit more this morning with maximum sustained winds now at 165 miles per hour and the National Hurricane Center is expecting peak winds of 180 miles per hour now the last hurricane that had winds around that intensity was Dorian back in 2019 when it sat over the Bahamian Islands and induced its wrath there. So that was Dorian back in 2019. It's not very often we see these hurricanes strengthen into a Cat 5 and actually make it up to 180 miles per hour. So let us see if Lee is going to be reaching that intensity, but it should remain a major hurricane, a very dangerous
dangerous hurricane through to the middle of next week. Now, what happens after this point onwards is still unclear. As a matter of fact, let's go on to the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. The third pointer says, it is way too soon to know what level of impacts, if any, Lee might have along the U.S. East Coast, Atlantic Canada, or Bermuda late next week, particularly since the hurricane is expected to slow down considerably over the southwestern Atlantic. Regardless, dangerous surf and rip currents are expected along most of the U.S. East Coast beginning Sunday. Continue to monitor updates to Lee's forecast during the next several days. And so, there you go. There is a lot of uncertainty down the road, guys, and we're seeing consistency with the model. So we have a pretty good idea of where Lee is going to head. Matter of fact, as we look at the ensemble tracks for Euro here, we can see that we've got some tight agreement here on the forecast track of the system because we're not seeing a whole lot of them trending more toward the west. So they want to keep the system offshore. That doesn't mean that will, in fact, be the outcome. There can be changes and then we notice that we also see a couple of members here and there so another system is expected i have been watching the model runs for some time and we could possibly see something else try to form in the main development region potentially headed to the caribbean as we head into next week but i'll be keeping you guys posted on that now as for the gfs ensemble tracks we see some of these members being much closer to the u.s but still keeping the system offshore so there is some uncertainty down the road and then in terms of Bermuda impacts will be possible there so the closer it is to the island the more uh, or the worst impacts there will be again it is expected to be a major hurricane might not be a cat 5 at the time it is passing by but it is likely to be a major hurricane potentially a cat 4 and with this kind of intensification that we've seen, not only of Lee, but other storms such as Franklin and even Idalia before uh, it made landfall, it goes back to what I've said long before things began getting heated across the Atlantic. I've stated that with the record warming we are seeing, that is going to be a fueling crazy intensification of systems once other environmental conditions are conducive. And that is exactly what we see happening right now. So what I said back then is coming or has come to fruition with these systems. And I really think that Lee could be the strongest hurricane of the season, but but maybe there'll be another that will prove me wrong because we've still got plenty of time to go. It's very warm out there and we are only now in that peak phase of the hurricane season uh, that is going to be through to the next several weeks. So we've got a lot of time out there. There are bound to be a lot more storms. Uh, and I've met, uh, as I've mentioned in previous updates, we could even see the current list being exhausted and uh, the National Hurricane Center will then have to resort to the supplementary list, which is just an additional list of names to be used in the case where the names for the season run out. And as it relates to Lee as well, there's likely to be some fluctuations in the intensity of it, particularly due to the eyewall replacement cycles, and that is something that is very common with these very strong hurricanes out there. So we'll see what happens with it, but regardless, the worst of the cyclone will be remaining offshore. So guys, that is what I wanted to share with you in this update. Again, there is uncertainty as it relates to the long term of Lee in terms of any impacts anywhere, but I will be keeping you guys posted in persons in areas to potentially be impacted should continue to keep watch. And I hope Hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be otherwise